Hello everyone, back to you into today's third video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, or today's third video. And that's going to take us around the 14th of April. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles over to around a couple of weeks. So it gets into the second half of uh, April, of course. And I have a look at 7SV2 at the end of the video uh, for the next four weeks. And that's going to take us pretty much to the... Uh, end of the month and possibly just at the very start of May actually. Uh, so I'll get on with all of that for you very shortly. Just hoping a busy day at Gaza up so far. So what we started off with the April month head forecast. We've also released the web forecast a week ahead. And uh, coming up later on today we're going to have um, the uh, Easter update. We'll have the fourth update for Easter uh, 2020 and that's going to be with you uh, tonight. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to say a big thank you to our latest PayPal donor. And our latest PayPal donor is also a patron uh, as well. So, hello and a big, big thank you uh, to you. So, I'm going to say a big thank you to Paul Steers. Paul Steers has given, uh, given us a donation through PayPal and is also uh, a patron for Gazweb is also. So, a big, big thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for your uh, support. Thank you so much for your kindness. Um, and uh, just a huge, huge thank you uh, to you, my, fam my friend, for helping to support Gas Levies through these uh, very difficult economic um, times. If you would like to become a donor for Gas Levies, all you need to do is come to the Gas Levies PayPal page, sign into your PayPal account, make whatever donation you want to Gas Levies. Um, and by doing that, you're going to get a mention videos. So we'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. We are going to give you uh, a shout out as long as you want one. If you'd rather say anonymous, then that is absolutely fine and is no problem uh, whatsoever. You can also become a patron, as uh, Paul is as well. So we've got 62 patrons uh, so far. Hello and a big thank you to our uh, 62 patrons. Uh, we very much hope that you are enjoying the content that we're producing at Gazwevis at the moment. If you'd like to become a patron, Gazwevis, all you need to do is come to the Gazwevis Patreon uh, page, sign up for a Patreon account, you don't really have one. I mean, given an ongoing monthly donation, it could be anything from $1 a month to Gazwevis, and by doing that, uh, you become a patron Gazwevis. And again, when you do it through PayPal or Patreon, you're going to get a mention video, so give you a shout out, and we'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. Just completely blown away by the response to this uh, over the past well, uh, two or three weeks. Uh, I never expected that we would get so many uh, donations and uh, so many people contacting us uh, to tell us how much that they are enjoying um, the content that we're producing uh, and whatnot. So just a big, big thank you to all of you uh, for your support for Gazweb. These are very difficult times for everybody. We're going through the coronavirus crisis and um, it's primarily, of course, a medical health crisis, also a financial and economic crisis. Everybody is in the same boat. Everybody is is going to be very anxious and very worried. And I do appreciate that uh, you should only donate to Gazweb as you can absolutely uh, afford to do so. Uh, we are all in a very, very um, difficult uh, circumstance at the moment. Very difficult and trying times. Things will get better, as I keep saying. Eventually, we're going to get through this uh, crisis. These things do happen uh, occasionally. It's probably the worst medical crisis or sort of viral crisis that we've had for 100 years. I think the last time we had anything as bad as this would have been at the end of the First World War when we had the Spanish flu. So, fortunately, these things only happen very, very rarely. Once in a, uh, really, we're living through once in a, in a century uh, calamity, if you like. And uh, we're just going to get through it, and we will get through it. Better times are ahead, and everybody's just going to come together and uh, we're going to support each other as as we go through this crisis. And uh, the way you're supporting Gazworth is, um, is just absolutely phenomenal. I never expected that we would have such a response when everybody else is already uh, struggling. So thank you so much to everybody. And my promise is that we are going to keep going with Gazworth as long as we possibly can. Um, I mean, eventually, if I was to get the virus, I would obviously have to, have to stop doing the videos. But until then, we're going to keep uploading. We're going to keep recording. We're going to keep uploading and uh, we're going to keep bringing you the content that you are hopefully enjoying. And I appreciate uh, you've all got a lot of other things on your mind at the moment. But I think it's very important that people have something else to do, somewhere else to go. If you like, it's on the telly, on the news 24-7 at the moment, isn't it, about the virus. So I think it does people good to get away from that and to be able to... Um, 
you know, go to the Gazweather's YouTube page or the Gazweather's uh, website and be able to watch the videos and just perhaps take their mind off what's going on a little bit. Uh, so, uh, again, just a huge thank you to all of you. Big thank you to all of our, uh, uh, our all of our donors. Big thank you to all of our patrons. Special thank you to our latest donor and patron, uh, Paul Steers. Thank you so, so much, Paul, uh, for doing that. Right, so starting with the uh, the uh, video at XC Weather, this is how things are looking in terms of the temperature currently out there. It's turning into quite a warm afternoon. So yes, we've got 17 Celsius flashing away there in a couple of stations. Uh, one of them is this one down here. They are up, uh, so that's down in the channel, of course. We've also got uh, a station flashing away uh, there. If we can find it, it's possibly going to be... Uh, one of the Heathrow, it's not Heathrow, so uh, it's one of these days just in Northfold is flashing away at uh, 17 degrees. Uh, other stations are into the mid to upper teens Celsius as well. It's a gloriously sunny afternoon across many eastern parts of the country. It's a bit colder up in the north, only 7 degrees there, uh, for example, at in, in, the, in Bavervi. Uh, and also uh, 7 degrees flashing away at uh, Tollet Bridge and just 7 degrees down here at Drum, Am Drum Albin. Uh, so it's a little bit colder up in the north, but down in the south and southeast, it's a glorious afternoon, and uh, uh, there's bags of sunshine as well, and it really is uh, a lovely afternoon. It's going to be even better tomorrow with temperatures rising into the low 20 Celsius. Of course, the message that the authorities are very much trying to give out is that despite the sunshine and the warm temperatures, you should continue following the guidelines of staying indoors. You can go out if you've got a garden. If you've got a, sh a shelter garden, you can go out into your garden. But uh, otherwise, stay indoors. And um, uh, you can open your windows, but uh, but uh, don't go beyond the boundaries of your home unless you've got to do, uh, you you've got to do um, some shopping, some food shopping or whatnot. And uh, you want to take your uh, one um, one period of exercise through the day. But, uh, you know, the, the message from the authorities is very much to uh, stay at home and protect the NHS to save lives. And uh, that's a message that the authorities are trying to get out. That despite this sunshine, please do continue to adhere to... Um, to uh, the social distancing guidelines and all of that sort of thing. But, yeah, it's a very nice afternoon out there, and it's going to be even warmer and drier across the eastern parts of the country uh, tomorrow. Uh, so the central temperature is uh, quite substantially above average, actually. We're only three days into the month. We do confirm here, by the way, that March came out at 6.7. That was one degree above 61 to 1990 average. is about average for 81 to 2010. For April, uh, we're standing at 7.9 so far. That's provisional to yesterday, the 3rd of April. Uh, it's an anomaly of 1.7 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average. So quite a warmish start to uh, April. This is only going to increase further, I would have thought, over the next few days as we, we are going to have plenty of dry and warm weather coming up. Tomorrow is going to be very warm across East England, temperatures up to 20 degrees. And by midweek, we're probably back into 20 degrees again. So this is likely to be... I would have thought this April is likely to be at least a couple of degrees above average uh, when we get through to like the um, uh, get through to like the end of uh, of the tenth day. Could I say the first ten days of April should come out at least a couple of degrees above average? I would have thought. And uh, it looks like the uh, anti-cyclonic weather is going to go on uh, as well. These are the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMDF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in absolute high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream red and orange. It circulates high pressure, blue to low pressure. And you can see that the ECM looks very anti-cyclonic in the 7 to 10 day time frame with above average heights very close to the country. The only thing is that by day 10, <clears throat> excuse me, by day 10, that ridge is just beginning to pull out to the northwest a little bit, maybe starting to allow slightly more of a northwesterly. But I mean, that's really nitpicking, and overall, it does look as though high pressure will be in control through the next week to 10 days. The GFS is very similar as well, again, placing us under a ridge of high pressure. That ridge also extends both to the east and to the south. Low pressure's out to the northwest, jet streams push northwards. So, once again, you'd expect a lot of dry and quite warm weather with that in the week to 10 day time frame. After all of that low pressure that we have through the winter, after all of that low pressure, it looks like we have well and truly turned a corner now 
and we are into proper and extended anticyclonic conditions. These are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average in London today from all wet to central. And uh, it looks as though the temperature is going to be above average, certainly for the next week's 10 days is where we start off that. So to around there, like that's to the 12th, 13th of April in around uh, a week or so's time, 13th of April, is actually, I think, Easter Monday. So substantially above average throughout that period, no problems there. From the middle of the month into the second half of April, we have got quite a bit of scatter. We've got these colder outlier members down here. We've got warmer outlier members up there. So it's a bit of uncertainty, I think, as we go beyond the middle of April. But certainly up to the middle of the month, we can expect a lot of warm weather on the way. And reasonably dry as well. It's not completely dry. There's going to be some precipitation there. Uh, so that's um, going into, uh, like, Monday. Rain could get a little bit stuck down in the southeast on Monday. Um, but otherwise, dry before that, dry after that. Again, around the 11th of April. So that's into the Easter weekend. Also a little bit showery then. But even though it's not a particularly wet ensemble, it's just some of those ensemble members are going for some rainfall. It's not going to be totally dry, but I think it is going to be drier than average. It's also going to be warmer than average, so uh, we can't grumble about that, I don't think. Temperature anomalies from the 4th to the 12th of April are above average. It's going to be a warmer than average week uh, to come. Precipitation anomaly is dry of an average away from the far northwest of Scotland anyway. So, uh, yes, warm and dry conditions continue for the next week. So that's how the GFS is looking for Tuesday. We're in a high pressure on Tuesday, bringing a lot of dry and fine weather. A little bit of rain in the far north, as Scotland may be, but otherwise uh, high pressure is ruling the east uh, through Tuesday. And that high is continues into Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, again, lots of dry and uh, settled weather coming up then. Temperatures pushing back up into the low 20s Celsius as well. Moving out into the east here, this is Good Friday, so just beginning to see the um, pressure leaking a little bit. Not particularly going low, pressure not going low, but just pressure is leaking away slightly as we go into the east weekend, which possibly gives us a little bit more of a showery type flavour. The air will be quite warm, and so with pressure just easing away, we perhaps get some uh, sharp April showers breaking out, but definitely no sign of anything really unsettled, let's put it that way, as we move up towards day 10. That's how we look, which is Tuesday the 14th of April. Again, high pressure is more or less in control. Obviously, pressure has weakened from where it was a few days before, so it's not it's not really strong high pressure, but it's probably enough to keep most of us dry, uh, although showers are uh, possible, I would think. If we was to extend out beyond that, uh, we can see that then we start to move the uh, low pressure in profit line. So it begins to go just a little bit cooler and perhaps a little bit more unsettled in the north and west anyway as we move into the second half of April. High pressure influence is still continuing though down in the south. And right at the very end of this GFS run, actually the high pressure intensifies again. So that's Monday the 20th of April. Again, high pressure is uh, really dominating the weather, bringing a lot of dry and warm weather as we end this uh, GFS run as far as we can go to Monday the 20th of April. The GEM looks like that. So again, high pressure is intensifying on Tuesday, very close to the country. And that high pressure will be dominating as we go into the middle part of the week. Again, lots of dry and fine weather. Low pressure weather begins to come in a little bit more strongly as we head towards east. So that's east of Saturday, length of April. Then low pressure is coming in off the Atlantic. But GFS doesn't show anything as dramatically unsettled. This isn't particularly dramatic, but the, the GFS is definitely not as unsettled as this. But uh, GM does take us to low pressure over e over the Easter weekend, which would, of course, be more unsettled than what the GFS is showing. And that's how we finish up with the GM again, in rather cool and showery northwesterly. So the GM is more unsettled today compared to uh, the GFS. Let's see what the ECM has to say. Again, high pressure is intensifying around Tuesday and through to Wednesday and Thursday. That high pressure dominates, bringing lots of dry, fine and quite warm weather. Good Friday, we're still more or less under the high pressure. And then the ECM is similar to what the GFS shows, which is just that pressure begins to ease away slightly. Not low pressure, just uh, a weakening of high pressure. 
as we go into Easter. So it's not particularly unsettled, but it could turn a bit more showery. Certainly not as unsettled as what the GEM is showing until we get to Easter Monday. And then we do get a general area of low pressure to the north of Scotland. That could bring some more persistent rain into Scotland and a cooler push of winds from the northwest as well. That's how we finish up at day 10 with the ECM. Again, the high pressure's building back in from off the Atlantic. So there's still a bit of a question mark about Easter. What exactly is going to happen in detail for the Easter weekend? I would tend to go more with the GFS idea. I think we will see a lot of dry weather this Easter, but we'll just have an increasing risk of showers, if you like. I'd be surprised if it gets as unsettled as what the, um, as what the GEM is showing. I'll probably the ESM is a little bit more unsettled than I'd go for uh, as well. But time will tell. We shall see. We're going to do the fourth Easter update tonight. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the 14th of April. We have 20 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure centred over the top of the country. So obviously, just beyond Easter, that's high pressure ruling the roost. 17, including the control and the operational ECM run, take the ridge out to the west, and they have this low pressure uh, up to the northeast. So a little bit more showery and a bit cooler as well, winds in from the northwest. And then these 14 just here are trying to revert us to a zonal situation with uh, low pressure to the north and high pressure to the south winds and quite a strong jet stream coming across the Atlantic. That could be the most unsettled scenario, particularly for northern parts of the country. In two weeks' time, these eruptions that we've got Quite a few of them. This is for the 19th of April. We have 14 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the northeast, low pressure to the northwest, and winds are in from like a southerly to southeasterly direction. So you would expect quite a bit of dry and warm weather with that. 11 have low pressure out to the northwest, high pressure is to the south, winds are in from the west. We have 10 with a big ridge of high pressure centered right over top of the country. That's probably the most settled scenario. Although there is also eight just here that has high pressure just to our northeast. Again, that's the main settled scenario. And then eight there, probably the most unsettled scenario and coolest, with a trough of low pressure sinking through Scandinavia and a mid Atlantic ridge. We're bringing down cool northerly winds and turning things quite unsettled. I think overall you have to say that many of those options uh, favour some sort of high pressure. The detail is to be determined, but uh, yes, many of those options are favouring high pressure to some degree. So it's not a bad outlook really this, even into the second half of April if you like dry spring-like conditions. Um, and finally, the CFS V2, so these are 500 millibar heights breaking down to week periods. The first week period takes from the 4th to the 10th of April. The coming week has above average heights to our east. Below average heights are out to the northwest. Winds are pushing northwards. There's lots of dry and fine weather to be enjoyed there, and temperatures would be quite warm as well. Week, uh, week two is the 11th to the 17th of April. Low pressure out to the west. High pressure then is to our east. Might be a little bit more on south, just a little bit more influence from the Atlantic and jet stream. But it could be really quite warm, that, with temperatures pushing, with winds, I should say, pushing up from the south. Temperatures could really be uh, lifting up there. Week 3 looks more unsettled. This is the 18th to the 24th of April. Low pressure then breaks through from off the Atlantic. High pressure sinks down towards um, the Canary Islands and away towards the Baltic Sea. That obviously is turning a lot more unsettled. Um, quite a bit cooler as well, bring wind in from the North Atlantic. So that's a more unsettled week, definitely. And probably quite a sense of week four as well. This is 25th of April to the 1st of May. And again, low pressure is well and truly coming in from off the Atlantic with uh, winds flat and westerly. Uh, definitely looks more unsettled for the second half of April compared to the first half of April uh, with the CFS V2. But really for the next 10 days, maybe the next couple of weeks, we don't have too much to worry about. It should like, looks like there should be quite a lot of dry and warm weather on the way. Now, before I go, uh, I'm just going to say about uh, the prize we're going to be giving away uh, this week. So we're going to be uh, launching a competition 
all know that you like a good competition. We're going to be launching a competition in association with metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation. Uh, we'll be starting this tomorrow. We'll be running it for a week through to Easter Sunday. We're giving away the Climate Wireless Rain Gauge. It uh, retails at £59.50. So retails nearly at £60. It's a fantastic uh, bit of kit to let you uh, measure the uh, rainfall that's falling in your location. And uh, this could be yours if you enter our competition. And to do that, uh, well, you have to do it from tomorrow. And uh, we're going to tell you tomorrow when we launch a competition how you can win this fantastic prize. And uh, what you've got to do to enter competition and uh, whatnot. So there'll be a video up. The first video up tomorrow uh, will be launching the competition. I'll tell you how to enter and how to enter competition and what you've got to do being with a chance of uh, winning that. I wasn't sure whether to do a competition uh, this year with everything that's going on because obviously uh, visits to gasworthies.com are well down on normal and the views to videos are also well down on normal and I completely understand and I completely appreciate that everybody has got a lot you know, a lot more important things on their mind than what weather is doing at, at the moment. And uh, all those people that like to see what weather's going to do because they've got events planned and that sort of thing, that's all off, off the um, table uh, this year as well. No updates for Glastonbury and things like that. So obviously it means that overall traffic is uh, one and three down, both to Gals Webbies and to the YouTube channel. Uh, but nevertheless, I still wanted to do a competition for those people that uh, that still uh, are, are sticking with Gals Webbies and watching the videos. And uh, I wanted to, uh, to do you a competition because we've done this for around six years now. I think this is going to be the sixth or seventh year in succession that we have done uh, this. So I still wanted to, to do a competition uh, for everyone. And um, you're going to have a chance of winning this uh, from tomorrow. Uh, and uh, that'll be the first video up, just telling you how to enter the competition and give you a little, little bit more detail uh, about it. So a competition on the way tomorrow and the winner uh, will be announced on Easter Sunday. Also, tomorrow we're going to have uh, Gals Web in Sunny Roundup, and we'll have some summer and vlogs as well. And there's going to be a live stream on the YouTube channel, as promised. Uh, we're going to do live streams every Wednesday and uh, and Sunday afternoon during this uh, coronavirus crisis. And the, um, and the first Sunday live stream will be tomorrow between 5 and 6 o'clock every evening. Just to allow everybody to check in, see how we're all doing uh, during this crisis, and to make sure that everyone is okay. And we will have a little bit of a chat about weather as well, of course, but uh, primarily to allow everybody to check in, just see how uh, we're all doing. So that's between 5 and 6 o'clock uh, tomorrow. We haven't finished with the videos today, though, because we've got the fourth Easter update coming up for you this evening. Uh, so, competition on the way tomorrow, as well as Gals Web is setting Roundup and some summer analogs and a live stream. Uh, we're going to do our best to keep you entertained uh, during this uh, period of lockdown. So, uh, we're certainly doing our best to um, uh, give you something else to focus on uh, while you can't go out and about. Right, that's it with that later on with the four feature update. So, come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.